Let's get some context. The amount of data we're producing is absolutely phenomenal. Every 10 minutes, five billion gigabytes of information produced. All this is leading, of course, to the rise of information, rise of data, rise of the Internet of Things. This here is just three alliances of very large corporations trying to standardize the language that these Internet of Things products actually talk to each other in. And you've got Apple doing its own thing and Google doing its own thing. So you've got like a five-way fight for the Internet of Things. This combination of AI and Internet of Things has led to um, things like this, Alexa. But if you look here at the forecast for what we'll get from you know, the, the, the penetration from these sorts of products, you'll see that Google and uh, very much Amazon and Alexa are going to really corner that market and have done already, but that's only going to get much, much bigger. Or another area of internet and technology that's brought about massive advantage for companies is obviously augmented reality. This is a bunch of people playing Pokemon Go in Taiwan. It had an enormous fanfare where it came out with a company using AI, machine learning, and AR to corner a particular market, one of the first consumer applications of this. What's astonishing is just two days after um, they launched Pokemon Go, just two days, um, Nintendo increased its value by $7.5 billion. Since 1993 to 2015, we've seen a one million times increase in com computational power. And this is what has led to it. So it's led us to this rise of artificial intelligence. How is this being used in business? And in particular, how to, how to talk to customers? This is Emotient, and Emotient uses that sort of technology to detect um, emotion and sentiment from an audience live. And this company was bought by Apple. And so they can out, we'll tell whether someone's angry, sad. If they had this, this camera on here, it could tell whether you were finding me boring or not, and things like that. Here, we've got KFC using AI facial recognition software to predict orders from their customers. In the financial sectors, this level of AI is being used to basically crunch huge amounts of data, which is what AI is really good at, huge amounts of data crunching to try and work out patterns that no one else has seen. A Hong Kong-based hedge fund called Adya, what they did was they created their own AI in-house to do this, and then they gave it an 11-year back data of the US stock market and, and turned it on and ran it. And it made a 25% return annually. One of the largest um, travel agent groups, TUI, are using the blockchain to give their customers a better experience. In fact, they want to cut out banks and the aggregators like Expedia all together and want to use the blockchain to allow customers just to book their holidays directly with them. They're already using blockchain to put their entire global inventory of all of their hotel rooms on the blockchain, saving themselves tens of millions of euros because they no longer need the servers. Um, and it's all on the, on the, on the web. People are using AI, of course, through messaging apps and through bots. This is nothing new. Line and WeChat have been doing this for some considerable time. One of the interesting things is how much companies are actually interacting with their consumers using these things. So, for example, the China Merchant Bank handles, through WeChat, 1.5 to 2 million customer conversations a day. Then the financial sector are using them too. You've got Acorn here, which is um, trying to get young people who don't like banking and don't really, aren't really interested or engaged, they want to gamify um, investing and get these young people investing. This has been incredibly popular and it's just growing and growing and growing. What's the next stage we're going to be getting for you know, the general consumer? This is Viv. What makes Viv special is that this is Viv writing its own program to answer your question on the device. And so consequence, you can ask it much more complex questions and it gets it right. All of this is bringing about a change in how companies are actually structured. The rise of the chief digital officer. A few years ago, there were virtually no chief digital officers in the corporate structure at all. But look at the rise just in, in the European region there. And some people have suggested that this, this new role, the chief digital officer, which will have an overarching view of the whole digital strategy of the company, will sit above the chief marketing officer and above the chief information officer and will probably be um, the, f the new fast route to CEO. A lot of people have talked about whether AI is a good or a bad thing, like is it evil, is it going to come and destroy us and take over our lives, something like that. AI is just a tool, it's like arguing whether fire is evil or bad, it is merely there to be used. AI is exactly the same 
and, cust and the right companies, smart companies, as I try to demonstrate here, are using it in many, many different ways to try and deal with their customers in a radically different way. They're not all getting it right, and some of them are get, uh, breaking new ground and some, aren't, you know, making, some are making mistakes, but the ones that are trying are very much ahead of the ones that aren't even bothering or trying to pretend that it's not happening at all.